Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. American Airlines pilots to vote on new contract. Female Tiger Moth pilot has lofty goals. And the top GA airport advocate goes solo. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. The pilots flying for the merged American Airlines and U.S. Airways will soon be voting on a new contract in an effort to avoid arbitration and secure an initial pay raise. The contract is the final proposal offered by American Airlines Group in November. The board of the Allied Pilots Association Union agreed late last Sunday to accept the contract proposal but now it must be voted on by the rank-and-file APA members. That offer included a pay increase of more than 18% retroactive to December 2nd, as well as a percentage hike for most non-union employees, as well as for any unions that complete post-merger contracts. The Allied Pilots Association Union represents 10,000 American Airlines pilots, as well as 5,000 pilots that fly for U.S. Airways. Most pilots relate to a historical aviation pioneer that they feel a kinship with. And for Amanda Harrison of Briz Norton, Oxfordshire, UK, it's the aviatrix Amy Johnson. Harrison hopes to one day recreate Johnson's 1930 flight from England to Australia in a de Havilland Tiger Moth. It's reported that Harrison is the only female commercial pilot qualified to fly the Tiger Moth in the UK, and she flies the plane for commercial bookings. She is quoted as saying the Tiger Moth is, quote, easy to fly, but difficult to fly well, end quote. She's also the only female member of a nine-person Tiger Moth air display team, and she's written a book titled Confessions of a Lady Pilot. After the break, a top aviation expert forms a company to help with general aviation issues. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument. TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Unlimited, Send us an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. One of the nation's top general aviation airport advocates is now available for hire by the GA industry. Bill Dunn, Airport Advocacy VP for AOPA for 23 years, has launched Aviation Strategies LLC, a new company that helps airport operators, GA pilots, and aviation business owners navigate complicated airport issues. The company is focused exclusively on issues at GA airports. Former AOPA president Phil Boyer praised Dunn, saying that few, if any, airport advocates have as deep an understanding of airport issues, airport regulations, and the complexities of dealing with airport neighbors at the national, state, and local levels. As principal of Aviation Strategies, LLC, Dunn is offering his expertise to communities, local pilots, airport boards, and aviation small business owners faced with serious airport issues. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information 
about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. As we brainstormed the concept of the next big thing in aviation media, we did so in concert with the assistance of hundreds of people via many hundreds of conversations. The first results of our work can be found in Airborne Unlimited. However, it was obvious to us right from the beginning that we needed to change the leadership dynamic as we went forward from concept to reality. Out of that process, we began to envision a pretty heavy-duty advisory board. Not the usual group of big names offering up a few glitzy quotes, but getting involved with a group of innovative leaders, highly experienced aviation community icons, and giving them some serious marching orders to be brutally critical as they provided oversight for the building of aviation's next new media. We're proud to have these amazing people as our Airborne Unlimited Advisory Board. Phil Boyer, Rich Davidson, Julie Felucci, Gary Harpster, Don Marianelli, Greg Marinak, Roll Murrow, Roger Sharp, Bob Showalter, and Patty Wagstaff. After these messages, a memorial fund has been established for the seven-year-old who was the sole survivor of a Kentucky plane crash. ADSB will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States. But you can benefit from ADSB today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADSB out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. Well, with so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A memorial fund has been established to assist seven-year-old Sailor Gutzler, the sole survivor of a plane crash that took the lives of her family. The official website is maintained by Prophecy One LLC, so beware of fraudulent sites. A 1,000-foot runway extension at the Warren County New York Airport is on indefinite hold. An environmental concern of being too close to a rare type of mineral-rich wetland could spell the end of the project. Marenko Swiss Helicopter has appointed Avaflex Aviation as its official representative for Guatemala. This means operators of the Marenko Swiss Helicopter helicopters will receive expert service from an in-country provider. Beechcraft Baron operators should be aware that an FAA airworthiness directive has been issued for model G-58 airplanes. Reports of fuel leaks problems with leaking fuel cells requires an inspection and possible replacement of parts. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. China's CAAC has certified the Comac ARJ-21-700 airliner, clearing the way for deliveries of the single-aisle airplane. It's reported the jet is intended to be a competition for airplanes in the 75 to 90 passenger segment of the market. And Comac has 321 orders for the plane, almost entirely from Chinese airlines. The only Western company to have placed an order with Comac for an airplane is GE Capital Aviation Services, which plans to take delivery of five AJR-21s. According to reports, certification comes eight years behind schedule, and it's claimed the airplane is overweight and outdated compared to other airplanes in the segment. It's expected to enter service in May of this year, and it's not been certified by the FAA or EASA. 
Well, that's our program for Thursday, January 8th. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne Unlimited is now streamed daily, Monday through Friday. And sometimes we'll have additional breaking news bulletins for important stories. Join us in a roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.